watching USA, Cable's Entertainment Network. Yeah, I thought this was the right place. Sure did. Now, what we gotta do is uh, flag down a car, go on into town. We'll get into town, we'll get a tow truck to mine out here and get your car. Let's see. Yep, yeah, that's all we gotta do. Mm, won't be long, right? Right in the middle of downtown. Come on, what's the matter now? I don't see any cars coming, Mr. Wood. I'm just gonna sit here and rest my bones. Yeah, well, they, they don't get too comfortable. I know, I know a car is gonna be coming along here any minute. We'll get a ride. Blinded lights, blaring horns in a cloud of dust. And a hearty high old silver, huh, Kimasabi? Mr. Arn. Our other patients won't be able to get any sleep if you leave the lights on. Uh, but the man hiding. There's no man hiding. Now, we talked about that. Besides that, there are two evening nurses and an orderly on duty, and nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody? Nobody. Now, the best thing for you to do is to go up to your room and try to get some sleep, okay? Good. I will call Mr. Croft, and he will take you to your room. I'm sorry, Doctor. Benedict's not at his post. Oh, that's all right. Will you take Mr. Arn to his room, please? Come with me, Mr. Arn. She was looking for you. Um, I just had to run into town to pick up a few things before the store's closed. Employees are not to leave the building while on duty. I've warned you about that before. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Prentice, I'm sorry. It won't happen again, I promise. See to that. Is that all? Yes. Oh, uh, wait. I think you should know that some parents of a patient in your charge are visiting tomorrow. And when I, um, ring you, I want you to bring her down. Well, of course. If, who's the patient? Uh, Laurie. Laurie Carr. Charted plane to Green County Airport. Waiting for this news. Nancy, that's the right. most wonderful news. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's see now. Oh, How long has it been? Yeah, uh, last Christmas, just before last Christmas. Uh, Laurie didn't even recognize Mike, but now the doctor says that there's an improvement. I can see why you can't wait. We'll be there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes? Well, the plane will be waiting for us at 10 a.m. We should be up at Green Haven by 11.30, 12 at the latest. I'm sure I don't have to tell you two how happy I am for you. I just can't believe that we'll be seeing our daughter tomorrow morning, Geraldine. Well, let me get out of here so you can prepare. Thanks for being so understanding. Nancy. Yes. Thanks for listening. About Dell, I mean. Oh, Geraldine, I don't know the man. But if you see good in him, I'm sure it's there. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Good night, dear. Good night. Well, the girls off to all do it up. <laughs> Just gone for a little ride. Mind if I join you? Oh. Uh, not tonight. Sheriff. <laughs> now, what do you want around here anyway? What do you think? Ken, Lula here and I, we got real big plans for tonight. So I'd appreciate it if you just tell me what's on your mind and let us get on with our business. Well, I just got a call from your daddy. What? 
of what he want. Carrie, did you know that Whitney and that punk kid he's got working for him tried to break into your place earlier this evening? Break in? Uh, are they okay? You don't care too much for your daddy, do you? My daddy can hear a cricket and sneakers coming five miles up the road, which gives him plenty of time to reach for his shotgun. Yeah, well, he ran him off with that old thing. But, uh, what do you suppose they wanted? Probably just wanted to talk to him. Mr. Whitney's been after all sorts of folks lately. Well, if you see Whitney, tell him he better come see me. Roy promises if uh, those two show their face on his land again, it's going to blow their heads off. Well, Papa just likes to scare people. Well, I wouldn't want him pointing his shotgun at me. You and me go do a little hunting for ourselves. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Oh. Mm. Ain't never been a mess that don't look a world better in the morning light. Uh. Jody looks very good in these swimsuits. Jeremy, what are you getting yourself into? Hello, Mitzi's place. What do you want? Well, that's surely a way to pull in the customers. Uh, Miss Martin, uh, this is Mr. Emerson. Is my old bar stool made anywhere there by any chance? You mean Gunther. A uh, perceptive child. Yes, yes. Mr. Wagner, please, huh? Yes, sir. Just a minute. Gunther, the phone for you. Phone call. Nobody knows I'm here but the babysitter. <sighs> it's Dale. All right. Just in time. Thanks. Spencer, just yeah. hold up. Uh, excuse me. Uh, hi, is that you, Dell? Yes, it certainly is. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm going to pack it in here a little earlier than I originally planned. Uh, is there an empty uh, empty seat anywhere there? I'd be, certainly be obliged. Well, you know, there just happens to be a, an empty chair right at my table. And listen, I have a hot tip on a filly that's starting off at the fourth race tomorrow. You don't say. Yeah. Listen, uh, I'm the babysitter. She's paid up to about 12. And, uh, you know, I'm not going anywhere, so why don't you come on over? Well, you can say fibs. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye. Eileen, uh, will you and Mr. Riley come in just for a minute? Yeah. Beautiful little invention. <laughs> You want to go over more files? Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, I just really owe you and Mr. Riley a bit of an apology. Oh, really? Well, yes. I mean, it wasn't fair of me to keep you here while I burned the midnight oil. So you can go home whenever you want to. Uh, oh, my goodness. I I'm late for a dinner engagement myself. I guess this stuff here will just have to wait, huh? Uh, yeah, listen, I'll see you in the morning, honey. And uh, <clears throat> just to show you, that I'm the right kind of boss, you can come in late. How about that? <laughs> Nine o'clock. Hey, 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 this is $100! Well, you can't see that. Uh, hey, stop. are going into the lights. Come on, maybe I'll go out in the road and I'll wave my arm. Do that. Just relax. Oh, you got some suggestions to make? Well, you gotta wave something bigger at people. I can't wait to hear this punchline. Well, you gotta give folks something they can respond to. I'm waiting. You should just sit back here and relax. I'll see what I can do. You think cars are gonna stop for naked man? Believe me, my approach is more subtle than that, okay? It's cold, but I don't care. the girls. Hi, you're free, too. Hey, 
Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Now, what are you boys doing out here alone? Skinny dipping? <laughs> no. No, our car broke down, and we'd appreciate a ride. Oh! We'll give you a ride, all right. We'll look in the back. Come on, it's cold out there. But it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> Well, now, look, you see, Red, uh, you got to study uh, the bloodlines and uh, the records and the jockey, very important. And then you got to learn how the horse is feeling on any particular day. Like, uh, I would bet on you if you were running. Thank you. Look, Red, you want to learn about horse racing or not? Oh, Gunther, maybe if you give me a minute, I can think of a reason why I should. Oh, no. Whoa. Would you look at this? <laughs> well, if you don't want to wait on her, I will. Gunther, just get a grip on yourself. The bartender can do it. Regular customer? Huh? Irregular. You know, come to think of it, I haven't seen her in here much. Gunther, will you put your tongue back in your mouth? Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so easily. Me, I spent a thousand dollars on new clothes. It took me two hours to do my makeup, and I end up looking like a cheap hooker. Well, when we were talking about taking the initiative, I didn't mean you had to go out and compete with Liz. Well, at the time, it seemed like the only way to attract his attention. Well, Liz's way is not the only way, trust me. Yeah, I know that now. I don't know. It's not that I'm angry with her. I'm angry with myself for trying to keep preacher, for wearing those stupid clothes. For trying to be somebody I wasn't. Yeah. Doesn't work, does it? Well, at the time, it seemed to be working. And then Preacher had to go to Marble Lake to work for Mr. Whitney. Do you know he hasn't even called me once since he's been there? Oh, come on now. He's probably just busy. Beth, it doesn't help to make excuses for him. I mean, take it from me. I've been hmm. making a lot of excuses for him for a long time now. Things just seem to get worse. Jody, you sound resentful. Well, yeah, I am. I mean, either we're in love and we care about each other and want to spend time together, or we don't. Okay, well, when you do spend time together, how do you feel? I don't know. I don't know. Things aren't going so hot right now, and I certainly didn't make matters any better by acting like a fool. Now, you did not act like a fool. You were genuinely trying to keep the two of you together. I know, and I, and I still want to. But we seem further apart now than ever. When Liz dresses the way she does, she gets any man she wants, doesn't she? More or less, yes. Why? Because it really seems to work. I mean, when I started wearing slit skirts and plunging necklines, I had the touch, too. Uh-oh, Jody, who is he? Jeremy Rhodes. <laughs> he told me I looked so good, he wanted me to model for him. And did you? Yes. Swimsuits and bikinis and all that. Oh, really? 
<laughs> really. I mean, disregard what I look like. If Preacher just finds out I even posed for Jeremy, things are going to get a lot worse between us. Well, given another chance, would you still pose for those photographs? Yeah, I would. <laughs> well, then the jealousy is something that Preacher's going to have to deal with himself. Jody, it's your own life. Yeah, I guess that's what we're both afraid of. Do you like Jeremy? Um, he's okay. Uh, enough with my problems, okay? No, no, I, I like listening. That's because you don't like to talk about your own problems. Oh, yes. Now, I knew you were going to turn this conversation around to me. Well, that's too bad. I just want to tell you how happy I am that you and Miles are in love. Or that you finally decided to admit it to each other. Yeah. He's so wonderful. Beth, I want you to know something, though. Hmm. Miles realizes that you're keeping something from him. I mean, he even asked me about it. You didn't say anything, did you? Well, no, I promised you I wouldn't. Thank you. Well, Beth, I mean, shouldn't you be more upset about this? No, because I made a decision. And for better or worse, I'm going to tell Miles I'm a virgin. Well, good. He'll understand, Beth. You'll see. Did you break it up? I'll tell you, Mitz, this is better than the time my brother Bruno and I cut a peephole in the Flying Finnerty sister's dressing tent. Oh, oh, excuse me. Just excuse me. <laughs> Oh, Hi, Miss Martin. Hi. Howdy. Hey, still. Yeah. Good oh. to see you, Pete. Hey, your table is waiting, sir. Well, let's dispense with the formalities and get down to the business at hand. Right. What about the... <clears throat> about the uh, hot tip on the ponies? Fourth race. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. And it's fixed. Tighter than a Boy Scout knot. Mm. Now, look. <laughs> I think we just might be onto something now. There is a guy that I know. He's very rich, one of Mr. Whitney's friends, and he owns a whole string of ponies, see? And I just, yeah. Look, mm -hmm. Now, see, mm -hmm. he has a horse in tomorrow's race, the same one. And you, you are telling me that this fat cat would be willing to put down a substantial bet with you? Uh, well, no. How about that? No, I don't, I don't think so, see? He just thinks of me as a chauffeur. Oh, but, uh, but you think he'd be willing to put down a bet with Mr. Whitney? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, they make wagers all the time. Uh -huh. But uh, Mr. Whitney's out of town, see? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait a minute. You're, you're not suggesting that we use Mr. Whitney's name. Are you, you telling me that this little filly is uh, shoe-in or ain't she? Sure, no doubt about it. I mean, well, then we don't have to worry about the payoff. Just about collecting. Hey, Timothy. Timothy, will you slow down and let me think? First, these two come up to Greenhaven asking questions. And now Lori Carr's parents are coming up for a visit. Yeah. And Carr is the DA down there. I don't like it, Timothy. I'm... I'm worried. I better make us all a big Listen, pot of coffee. Cool your jets, all right? Easy, Lula. Law's here. I'd like to report an accident, Sheriff. An accident. Well, actually, it was more like attempted murder. Gunther, wouldn't you rather come in here as an invited guest than sneaking in on somebody else's membership? Of course. But using Mr. Whitney's name and using his money are two different things. But he isn't even going to have to know it was borrowed. No, no, I got a bad feeling. Oh, listen, we'll, we'll cut him in for 10% just to use his good name. 20%. 20? Yeah, 20% or nothing. All right, 20. 20 it is. Okay. All right, then I'll do it. Atta boy. Now, what's this rich fella's name? Bernard Westcott. Westcott. And he knows that you work for Mr. Whitney. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think this is going to work. <laughs> Partner. <laughs> it will work. <laughs> joint's a little old, don't you think? Excuse me? Come on, you know what I mean. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going. All right. But not with you. Well, 
Boy, that's a first. What's that? I've never seen her go home alone. <laughs> Tom? Yes? Uh, where is that contact sheet that Jeremy Rhodes left? It was here just a minute ago. Oh, you mean with that hot little item in the swimsuit? Her name is Jody Travis. Yes, I, I put it here. Do you know where it is? Oh, I don't know. I thought you had. No, I don't. You sure here. it's not here? Check back there. Murder is a serious charge, Whitney. Yeah, especially when you get your brake line cut, huh? Look, I understand you two were up at the Stanton place earlier this oh, evening. Wait a minute, Ken. You know my daddy has nothing to do with that. Look, I've had enough of this. I don't want to hear any more about it. I hope she's right. So who do you think it? That I don't know. But it looks like your search is beginning to make somebody pretty nervous. to see me, Dr. Prentice. Nurse Miller informed me you were in Laurie Carr's room a while ago. Yeah, I was. Why? Why? I, I was checking up on her. You know, I want to be sure she's very well rested for this meeting with her parents tomorrow. You remember how she's reacted in the past to such meetings. Yes, I remember. She became almost catatonic when she was informed of impending visitors. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to check up on her. Well, fortunately, she is looking forward to her parents' visit tomorrow. Oh, gosh, well, I'm real glad to hear that. That will be all, Benedict. 